First question I have is, and I, I want to test um, how well you're all listening this morning. Um, Bill mentioned there was a, a sort of holy trinity, if you will, uh, to be successful, three areas of expertise. Um, can anyone remember what they were? Put your hand up, because I can't. Business, design, and technology. Business, design, and technology. And I think today has been a fantastic um, introduction into the design side. Um, hopefully, everyone's had some really good insights, and there's a lot more to come. And I think the technology has also uh, been uh, mentioned as well with regards to Windows 8 being built on, obviously, the Windows 7 platform. The one area that, that's the sort of elephant in the room, because it's all well and good talking about designing amazing apps, but I suppose one of the key questions I have is, in this room, how many people here have clients they actually develop for? OK. How many are actually going to develop an app themselves? OK. I almost want to ask, well, again, what, is, what is everyone else doing? But the, 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 uh, the reason I ask that question is my own experience is I'm, I'm an evangelist within, within Microsoft. But prior to this, I was seven years in Vodafone Ireland, and I was head of online sales and marketing. And one of the things that I actually wanted more than anything else was to actually understand the commercial proposition as much as it looking beautiful and working beautifully, I actually needed to understand, well, what does that actually mean from a commercial perspective as well? So literally, I'm going to take 10 or 15 minutes. We're not going to have a huge amount of time on this. If there are questions, please come and find me at lunchtime. Um, but there are, there are five things. <coughs> there we go. Um, five points that I'd actually like to cover off today. And it's around Windows 8. So, Effectively, the, the five things are around uh, discovery, reach, the actual terms and, and the business models uh, that we have for Windows 8, and obviously the economics. The reason I'm doing this is I actually want you to be able to have conversations with your clients. So it's great if you are developing your own app, and, and if anyone attended the, uh, the event in Trinity College, uh, I think a question was asked, who wants to earn $10 million? And, uh, and there was a, a very simple calculation. Uh, about how you earn $10 million, and it was effectively 0.5% of the entire uh, available Windows 7 ecosystem. But more importantly, I think it's about actually being able to have a sensible conversation with the people that you're looking at developing um, apps with. With regards to uh, discovery, so um, I think we asked a question about who's seen Windows 8, and, and hopefully a lot more of you are starting to experience it today um, here. But, but how do you actually find the applications is, is one of the first things, again, that I would have asked. Um, you know, it's a new operating system. How are people going to be exposed to it? Well, the first thing that we've done is obviously made the applications themselves um, highly accessible through that nice little icon that says store. And when you actually get into the store environment, obviously there are a number of levels. You can, again, use the, the, the pinch, and you'll actually be able to see uh, the various categories that are in the market. And it's worthwhile having a look at this. But the other thing to think about as well is um, the contextual search. So when you bring in the charm and push the search button, all of the search on Windows 8 is contextual. So therefore, what you'll see is um, the, the store is highlighted in this particular context. So when you actually start searching, and you need to think about that as part of the development as well. So how will people access? How will they find your application? And it's about tagging it and ensuring that it's correctly identifiable within the store environment. A lot of people are asking, this area here, Spotlight, how am I going to get in there? And that's, that's uh, an area where, obviously, there's a huge potential uh, to take an app and, and obviously help it go to uh, the exponential level of, of downloads. And to be honest, the first thing you have to do is make sure it's beautiful. There's absolutely no doubt whatsoever. The only applications that are going to get into this particular area are ones that genuinely are exceptional. Because we honestly believe that, that Windows 8 is going to fly like nothing else before. And there are going to be an awful lot of people developing applications. It's, it's not confirmed yet. What we are hoping is to have a little bit of control from, a, from an Irish context um, with regards to what's also featured um, in this space. There's, there's going to be a huge pressure, as you can imagine, uh, from Microsoft corporate uh, with regards to what does appear in there. But we're also very hopeful uh, that what we'll be able to do is, is obviously, uh, local developers that we want to support um, are also featured um, in this particular area. So reach, um, and, and this is obviously an incredibly important one as well. I know that, that, um, that Josh uh, sort of mentioned uh, the number of languages, the number of markets, and, and also uh, local pricing, which is, you know, again, from a commercial perspective, is a, a significant consideration. Um, 
absolutely talk to um, uh, the guys that, that we've got here today that, that will actually help you translate this into languages. But what we've tried to do again is simplify the process for you. Now, we're not going to say that we understand or that we're going to take care of the terms and conditions in every single country with regards to gambling laws. That's, you know, all that kind of digital rights management obviously is your area that you need to, to look at with regards to the countries you put in where you're allowed to do it. But ultimately, what we are trying to do is enable you to, uh, to effectively um, target as large an audience as you possibly can through your development. And I think this is quite an interesting one. Um, it's, it's looking at the comparative size of, of markets. Now, this is from March. So when you look at these, effectively, Windows 7 is as big as the combined Android, iOS, and Mac market. Now, the important thing to note is this is six months old. But 12 months ago, when we did the same uh, look at the marketplace, that 690 million for Windows 7 was 400 million. So that's 290 million users that are on Windows 7 enabled devices in six months. And I guarantee you that number is obviously increased exponentially again as well. I think uh, Steve Ballmer was uh, doing a presentation the other week. And uh, I can't remember the exact time frame, but, but I know from his perspective, the number 400 million was one used with regards to what we believe Windows 8, uh, the, the number of people that will have Windows 8 downloaded onto their devices and actually using it, which you know, that's a, that is a significant marketplace for you to go at. And, and again, the important point to note is Windows 7, any Windows 7 device, all the stuff that we're demoing out there, they're all Windows 7 devices. All we've done is put Windows 8 onto them. And that's the really important point to note is accessibility of Windows 8. And, and one of the guys on the panel was also saying, you know, and I've done the same as well. I was, I was on my wife's laptop the other day, and it was Windows 7, and it was clunky and horrible after I've been using Windows 8 for the last six months. Transparent terms. So again, I mean, this is, this is relevant for, for everyone, uh, whether you're developing for yourself or whether you're explaining it to, um, obviously, the, the companies and the clients that you're working with. And again, one of the things that I really like about this is just how simplified the process has become with regards to the way that you go through the submission, you understand exactly what all the different areas are, and also importantly, is when you're actually going through the certification process. So the, the, you know, the, the good news is we try and get timelines in there, and, and absolutely we're trying to stick to them. There's obviously a lot of talk about you know, various platforms and, and how long they take uh, with regards to certain areas being a little bit more flexible and, and certain native applications being a little bit less flexible with regards to uh, the development process. And uh, from the experience we've had so far, we're, we're somewhere in the middle. Now, what we're saying at the moment is, I'm sure everyone knows, October the 26th is the big day uh, with regards to the Windows 8 launch. Um, we're hoping that a lot of people in this room have already started development. The key to be in store for the 26th is actually to have your app submitted by October the 1st. So it might be quite a short time frame for a number of you in the room. But um, the only reason we're saying that is it's the guarantee. So to be guaranteed to be there on GA, on launch, you need it submitted by October the 1st. And obviously, the opportunity of that is, is obviously first mover advantage. We want you to be in the store. You know, um, We'll do some demos, actually, in the other room with regards to how the store itself works. But there's a number of ways of actually um, the applications themselves being featured with regards to their placement. Unsurprisingly, there's, a, there's an SEO element to that as well uh, with regards to um, you know, the more apps that are downloaded, the higher up they will appear within the way it's presented. So obviously, being first into store, getting people downloading your apps will obviously exponentially increase your chance of being downloaded as well. The other thing that's, uh, that's actually very nice is the amount of analytics that are available um, off the shelf as well. So, um, when you actually look at this, it'll, it'll literally break it down into age groups. And the advantage of this as well is obviously everyone's logged in via their Hotmail, Live, et cetera, accounts. So we have an awful lot of information, contextual information about the people that are actually downloading the applications as well. And there's some just very simple, nice tools that you can use to get a feeling about how well uh, your application is moving and whether you're really hitting the right demographics. And, and again, it was the conversation that I was very interested in when I was in my previous role. So a few simple principles, very concise and clear, and there's, there's no carve-outs. So we're not distinguishing 
depending on the type of app that you're actually developing. And I think that's, that's also um, obviously very important. Now, this is where it gets interesting as well with regards to the various options. And I'll, I'll put them all up there. The reason this is interesting is what Microsoft is effectively saying is, do you know what? We've got a load of stuff that's going to simplify the process for you. We want to make it as easy as possible for someone that hasn't developed um, an e-commerce platform or uh, you know, they don't have their own advertising model. So we'll make it really simple for you, and we'll actually enable you to do that off the shelf in the actual uh, development toolkit. But if you do, or if you have a fairly complex model, you can use your own. And I think that's, again, it's, it's one of those points where a lot of thought has actually gone into uh, this, this process. But um, effectively, when we look at this, um, one-time purchase, so you know, what everyone's used to, um, you know, time-limited trials and, and feature differentiated, i.e., um, uh, you, you just have a fixed cost and you can do buying in games or you know, uh, subscription repeats. Purchase over time, which is, which is um, effectively uh, something like a magazines, that kind of thing, monthly subscriptions, and you can constantly take the money. But as I say, the using of your existing commerce, I think, is actually uh, one of the things. And we, we actually have a, an amazing example already um, with um, it's a PC uh, monitor. Now, PC Monitor has been released uh, for a while now on Windows 8. It's already had 20,000 downloads, paying downloads. So it was a free app to download, but 20,000 people have actually already signed up and started paying through their e-commerce platform. Now, it's a, an app developed in Ireland. It's, you know, it's, it's obviously uh, gone down exceptionally well with the, with the Windows 8 users. But the important point to note is, 20,000 paying users on an operating system that hasn't been released yet. I mean, genuinely, that is, a, I think, a, a fantastic example. I think they're getting somewhere in the region of 200 free downloads every day at the moment, of which they're seeing a significant uptake on the people that are actually subscribing to that, surface, uh, that service now. Um, Unsurprisingly, trials matter. I mean, the, the stats on this is, um, you know, it's uh, effectively, um, you'll substantially increase the number of downloads. Uh, unsurprisingly, you'll also get a decent conversion. So ultimately, your revenue will, will increase. But the important point to note about this as well is that, that with Windows 8, you can actually have a full free trial. So it's not, it's not your light version, and then you go on and buy the full version. It's actually, you can, you can deliver the full application itself. And if you do that, then what you have is a significantly higher chance that, you know, it's the old first one's free uh, kind of idea. If, if you actually do that, you've got a significantly higher chance that people will actually convert. And this is what we found, um, certainly from a Windows Phone perspective, we absolutely expect to see the same uh, with Windows 8 as well. And as I say, this is another, uh, another key point as well. If you don't have your own ad serving system, there is, uh, there's a very simple process with regards to, and, and Josh has you know, managed to develop an app within 24 hours around and using, uh, leveraging the Microsoft um, advertising system. So you have a chance. I think um, on the advertising side, I think it's a, a similar model um, to what we actually look at with regards to uh, the economics. So when you actually look at revenue sharing, and again, this is one of the areas that, that we like to think differentiate ourselves in the market at the moment is 70% of the, uh, the revenue from the application um, goes to yourself. The difference is that we're on a tiered process. So once you've gone over $25,000, you get 80%. And that, as I say, is another, I believe, significant differentiator in the market at the moment. So you actually have a better chance of making even more money. Pricing, so again, there's a, there's a lot of code um, that's actually available at the moment. Makes it very simple to set the pricing. We've got a, a range that we have at the moment, and it's a, a tiered model. Uh, it would, should fit in with, with most of um, the, the sort of app pricing that you're used to. Uh, but again, what we're trying to do is make it as simple as possible for you to develop on this platform. So, as I say, five very simple things to remember. Easy to find. The reach is absolutely phenomenal. The terms are very, very clear. And the business model is something that will resonate when you're actually having those commercial discussions. And ultimately, you've got an opportunity to make more money developing on this platform than with some of our competitors.
Now, I would say questions, but to be honest, I'm going to stop you all from lunch, so I'm not going to take questions right now. What I will say is I will be there, and my colleagues will be there as well. So if you have more questions, please come up to you afterwards and let me know. Thank you.